Today, we're at Delaware Coastal Airport to work on our VOR skills, specifically doing a hold over a VOR station with proper wind corrections. We'll use the hold as depicted on the approach plate for the VOR runway 22 into this airport. We're going to put the Waterloo VOR 112.6 into Nav 1. We'll switch the GPS over to VLOC mode so the receiver is tracking the VOR. From the ground, we're not able to pick up the signal, as we could see from neither to nor from flags being displayed right now. But we know it's about a 050 heading to the station from here, so we set that into the OBS. After we take off and climb out, the needle comes alive and we get the to flag. We ID the station from the GPS unit. At a safe altitude, we're going to turn to a heading of 050 to track inbound to the station, twisting the needle and correcting our heading accordingly. We'll climb up to 3,000 feet. After we level out, we want to get an idea of what compass heading keeps the needle centered. We now have 060 set into the OBS, but it looks like it's taking about a 070 heading, a 10 degree correction to the right to keep it centered. This means the wind is coming from our right side, from a more southerly direction. When we overfly the station, the flag will flip from to to from. We're going to first turn to the outbound heading of 033 with maybe a bit of correction to the right for wind. Then we're going to time our outbound. Typically you look for one minute, but let's give ourselves a bit more room to intercept and use 90 seconds. While that's going, we'll twist the OBS to set the inbound course for the hold. 213 degrees. We don't have to follow the needle here as this is just the parallel course on the entry, but if we do, it gives us another chance to gauge wind drift. That 033 heading is pushing the needle left of center. We're still getting pushed from the right, which makes sense as we judge the wind coming out of that southerly direction. Remember that because we're flying opposite the inbound course which is set on the VOR receiver, we have to use reverse sensing. Rather than chasing the needle here, we are the needle. To get it centered, we have to fly right. Doing so causes that needle to come back towards center a bit. We don't have much time to experiment though, so at 90 seconds we want to start our turn back inbound to intercept. 213 is the inbound course. Usually you want a 45 degree intercept. With wind more out of the south having pushed us in the turn, we want to correct to the left of that, so we'll roll it out on about a 160 heading. We're back to normal sensing, and so when the needle comes in, we make a right turn to join the inbound course. We'll add just a bit of correction left for the wind. It looks like that causes the needle to deflect again though, so we'll need an extra correction left. This seems to work. With the needle centered, we can keep it there with a heading of about 205 or 206. This is a seven degree left correction from the 213 inbound course. The guideline is to triple the inbound wind correction when flying outbound. Triple this will be 21 degrees, let's remember that. When the flag flips, we turn outbound using a standard rate. There's no provision for the wind on either of the two turns. We make up for that on the triple wind correction on the outbound leg. We're corrected 21 degrees into the wind this time, so our turn goes all the way around to 054 degrees. When the flag flips back to two, we start the timer. Let's give ourselves a bit more time again. Ultimately, we're looking to get our inbound leg to be one minute so we need to figure out how long to fly outbound to get that length. Notice on the breadcrumbs that we're purposely flying a ground track that isn't parallel with the racetrack pattern. That's okay because the effect of the wind on the inbound and outbound turns will cancel this overcorrection out. That's the whole point of doing the triple drift correction here. After 90 seconds, we turn back inbound, looking for the same 205 heading we used before. Once we roll out inbound again, we're going to start timing. When we cross the station and the flag flips, we have a minute 50 timed. We want that to be one minute, so we need to shave 50 seconds off that last outbound leg, which was a minute 30. So we're only going to fly a 40 second outbound leg, which should get us far enough to allow us to fly a 60 second inbound leg. What we figured out now is that we have a slight left to right crosswind on the inbound leg and a larger headwind on the inbound leg. This confirms our hunch that the wind is out of the south with maybe a southeasterly component to it. We fly the shorter 40 second outbound leg and that allows our inbound leg to be just a minute this time. We found both our wind drift correction and proper leg timing for this hold with the wind. Check out IFR training and more ground schools at the link here and in the description.